Hello and welcome to Funny Science Fiction, the live edition. Hello and welcome to Funny Science Fiction, the live edition. The show where if we're feeling cute, I don't know, we might nurse all the Garflox later. I don't know, it might happen. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> What has reference? Narthal the Garthox. And before we get into tonight's show, we need to say our thanks to our show partners, Bridgework Studios and Level Up Sabers. And even though he's had another week to work on a video, Bridgework Studios still does not have a video. They do not. Level Up Sabers! So even though he doesn't have a video, he does still have a link. So links for both Bridgework Studios and Level Up Sabers will be found in the notes and comment section below. How much faster can I say that? <laughs> I don't know, but I was waiting for you to like go out of breath on that one. That was pretty impressive. Yeah, All right, guys. I've got a lot of vocal training. <laughs> <laughs> we want to remind you that if you haven't already, now is a good time to do what the banner says down below and to remember to click like and subscribe if you're watching our video here on YouTube. It helps us greatly, helps us to continue to grow. And if you wanna help us in our efforts to create content, we also ask that you consider buying us a coffee on the website that's going to be shown on your screen here in just a moment. That uh, helps us to offset some of our costs and to continue to make content for you uh, uh, so that you can have things to laugh about and or at us. Either way, we don't care. Just send us your money. <laughs> I love the honesty. <laughs> Sorry, good. I, I don't think I get more honest than that. That's right. Hit that like button if you're in the chat. That's right, Jay. You tell them. Uh, oh, and let's welcome our guest tonight. <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> First up. Welcome to Funny Science Fiction Live. We have from TikTok, Ben Riley. OB Ben Riley. Hello there. <laughs> Hello there. And then from Growing Up Skywalker, we have Sam. Hi. What's up, Sam? Hey, and then from the Three Geeks podcast, we have Jason Taylor. Hi, everybody. Ooh. Thank you. What's up, Jay? Hello again. So excited. Wait. You were in the comments, but now you're on the show. How does this sorcery happen? Teleportation. It exists oh. in 2022. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Well, before we jump into tonight's topics, guys, let's start with Sam. Tell our viewers and our listeners where they can find out about Growing Up Skywalker. Hi, I'm Sam, and uh, my co-host, Anna, and I do the Growing Up Skywalker podcast. We're going through every canonical star wars work she has never seen any of them and i've seen all of them and uh we're currently on season five of the clone wars so some real exciting stuff you can find us on all of your podcast providers at growing up skywalker you can find us on patreon on twitter instagram just everywhere look for growing up skywalker uh and we really appreciate listens and supports thank you Okay. Excellent. I and I have to I have to say before we, we move on, I just want everybody to know I have a bit of a podcast crush on Growing Up Skywalker. <laughs> I have put this out on social media a couple different times. They have a phenomenal show. Even if it's uh something that you've you know, Star Wars is something you've grown up with and like I have, there are things that you can pick up, you can learn. Uh not only because Anna is is learning it as she goes, but Sam has more knowledge in his head about Star Wars than I have forgotten. <laughs> and it's it's kind of impressive what what he knows and, and the random facts that he knows. It, that, that's the other nice thing. So, yeah, please go check out uh, Growing Up Skywalker. Big fan over here. So. <laughs> Sorry, I heard the cackling from the other room. <laughs> we have we have a facial hair conversation going on in the comment section. And it's kind of impressive. 
Um, I'm sorry, but when I can hear my husband cackling from the opposite end of the house. I had every intention of shaving down to a mustache, like yeah. my buddy Nick. But I used my daughter. I had to use one of my daughter's new razors, like hers, and their razor is so thin. So by the time I had done mutilating my face, I was done. <laughs> I want to yeah. see with like the old Hulk Hogan, like you know, handlebar mustache, just ex- ex- and, and, ju- and just That's how mine you know, grows. Him. Nice. I can't I wanna, do that. I get like I gotta, super thin on this side. I can't. I can't grow further <laughs> this way. If I grow a mustache. Two things happen. Number one, there's a, a 70s porn soundtrack that follows me everywhere I go. And, and number two, I laugh at myself so hard. Every time I look in the mirror, I'm like, <laughs> you look like an idiot. I don't look good with a mustache. A lot of people do. I just, yeah. You know, that's true, John. But uh, women's uh, shaving cream, that's where to go, man, my friend. Like, it <laughs> feels so good against your face. Because I'm out of all my stuff. So I had to use my daughter's shaving cream and one of her new razors. This face doesn't even use shaving cream. Ooh. Is that why your cheeks are always so red? No, I just slap myself every time I wake up. <laughs> They're really <laughs> angry right now. <laughs> Stop shaving without cream. Those are lightsaber he's, burns. He's Nick's just like, all right, like, guys, we're going live. Boom. off his face. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Ben, why don't you tell everybody where they can find your fantastic content? Oh, yeah. Hi. Uh, so I'm on TikTok <laughs> uh, at Hardy underscore healer. I do a bunch of different stuff, and I haven't posted in a bit. Well, actually, let me correct myself. I posted today. It took a while to get there, but now I have a full-time job that is taking up every waking moment of my life. So, Being in adulthood. Stupid adulting. I'm working on making a whole bunch of, like, stacked-up videos that I could just send out. So, All right, cool. And Jason, where can people find the Three Geeks podcast? Just jump on 3geeks.ninja. Check out yesterday's episode. We had the boys from Some Nobodies take on Team 3 Geeks, Dan and Justin, and a remake pitch for Firefly. It was a lot of fun. And um, it was good. I I liked their picks and choices, everything. So check it out. It was on yesterday. I was so disappointed because I lost track of time yesterday. And then I realized that you guys were on. I'm like, all right, I'm going to jump in. I literally jumped in as you said goodbye. You know, it's recorded, Tim. You can always... I know I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back and check it out. I just haven't had time today, but I will check it out uh, in the next day or two. But uh, I had actually yeah. yesterday was Sunday. Oh, yeah. you're fine, man. We weren't live yesterday. Oh well, that we makes were, it a little bit. We better. were literally phoning it in. That's awesome. Yeah, I was like, I'm gonna watch Three Geeks. This is gonna be great. They got some nobodies on. Click. All right, goodbye, son of a. <laughs> to, to be fair, so I've I've done that with this podcast where it's like, <laughs> oh, they're live. Like, for some reason, my phone will send the push notification at, like, 7.58. And then Tim I'm like, oh, look, click. All right, we're done. More fun Bye. And then it's gone. My new work schedule makes it so hard to be on this show. Like, Tim has asked me every week for, like, the last five weeks to come on. And I work till 7.30 now. But I was off today, so I got to be here. I'm so excited. And in my contract to be on this show, it says that Ben must also be on the show with me. <laughs> Pretty much. Apparently, that's yeah. that's what's going on. You guys have a All right, guys. Well, just Jason, because he's on enough. It, we're going to have to send one Ben's way as well at this point. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's get into tonight's topic so that we're because I'm thinking we're going to have uh, a little a little conversation here tonight about some Star Wars things. So because over Star Wars celebration over the last weekend, there's a lot of things that got announced, a lot of things to catch up on. I'm very excited about some of this stuff. Um, some of it, I don't, there's some of the stuff that we don't have details on, but we're just going to highlight it and we'll kind of, we'll, we'll move from there. But, uh, first and foremost, we will start with Kenobi. I go first with my thoughts to him. I would love for you to go first with your thoughts. Thank you so much. I, um, I've not watched Kenobi yet. I made a promise to my son that I'd watch it with him and he hasn't been here yet. So I... Can't, but I've, I've spoilers are fine. So spoil the heck out of it for okay. me, guys. It's good. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> spoiler spoiler warning <laughs> for those who have not seen. Which at that point, why are you here? You know <laughs> right. what we're talking about. Yeah. Well, there's that. So, all right. So, guys, tell me what your thoughts are. Tell me what you you're thinking. Um, for Kenobi, first impressions. I love it. <laughs> uh, 
Tim, uh, for my first impression, can you can you do the thing? Yes. One second. I'm doing something yep. else on the things with the things. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Wait for it. Oh, there we go. And I'm getting there. I have to find the thing. Oh this, my is gosh, very oh, this is very depressing. <laughs> oh, here we go. Job. I had, well, actually, I have more than one. That's you have a point. lot of jobs, okay? Here's the thing. Kenobi! I feel much better having played that. <laughs> Can I just say that Whitworth. Sam Whitworth at like celebration being specifically asked to scream Kenobi? And then doing it just is made, an incredibly wholesome thing. Made my heart happy. Yish. Yeah, I. Uh, that was one of the things I wanted him to do when we had him on our show, but he gets asked to do it so much that I was like, we were like, we're going to avoid that. But all things being honest and open, I would have giggled like a third grade <laughs> school girl had he done that on our show i'd still be giggling about I it i mean considering it was episode 66 we uh... exactly yeah <laughs> you had you so the opportunity oh we took that opportunity and he did the emperor's voice and said execute episode 66 you should have had him say uh kathleen like he would have said <laughs> so would be the spectacular. to one of the things that I noted in this episode, uh, so I watched both episodes uh, this morning because busy schedule, and that clip and the relationship between Rebels, the Inquisitors, and Kenobi, as well as what's going on with Kenobi in the intervening years and how he appears in episode four is this super really crazy relationship. But mm -hmm. all that said, uh, and here's here's the big spoiler watching the grand inquisitor get stabbed in the gut i went like this and <laughs> I, I was lying in bed next to anna and i'm silently screaming for two minutes i'm like i was <laughs> not expecting that not expecting no, I wasn't that either. at all i i'm just sitting there when that happened i'm like all right this is shocking and insane mm -hmm. he's not dead it's star wars he, of course he, that's he what i thought too he's not dead he what? literally can't die because he's got to be somewhere in like five years <laughs> or or the pushback of the light and makeup of having the grand inquisitor not look as emaciated and drawn as his rebels counterpart led to the disney crew being like oh yeah you, you don't like the grand inquisitor well watch this we'll kill him and then you can replace him later with someone actually wearing the what is it utapawan makeup yeah. more effectively yeah. like uh the character in episode three who has five lines or whatever yeah right I, i'm wondering if they're gonna do that like if that happens well, to be another utapau in grand inquisitor and at which point it's like they're kind of like you're specifically looking for this one type of person to fill the role of grand inquisitor and it's a little weird could be yeah, yeah i look at it i look at it this way i think that you know, it's early enough that if they are going to kill off the Grand Inquisitor, they do have time for another one to be elevated to that position. I don't think it's a once Grand Inquisitor, only Grand Inquisitor. That's, I don't think that he can't be replaced. Um, so I think that there's. It's either that he's wasn't killed and we just saw him laying there and he was just you just very wounded. And, and then, you know, there, there's going to be an issue between him and um Okay. Was Reva. it Rhea? Reva. 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 Excuse me. Yes. Yeah. Third sister. Yeah. Yeah. So it's either going to be an issue between the two of them for the the rest of the Kenobi series, which would actually be kind of interesting, and add to a, a better storyline between them. Um, or he is dead, and they're going to have time to replace him before we get to Rebels and see him die there. Which so. is like uh, five, six years on from this point in universe. Correct. Yeah. Because when we see Leia in Rebels, she's 16. Yes. Yeah. So I don't think he is dead. I mean, it's... Yeah. I don't think so either. Power. It's just a stupid theory. And also, like, speaking of Maul, he had a much worse lightsaber wound to the gut and survived. So And right. Anakin was practically fried chicken and is still alive. So. Right. True. Yeah. yeah. Maul the survived other... the half-off sale, so we're, we're good. The I other think... note that I really was surprised about was... Um, you know, I'm watching the previews. <laughs> I'm watching as it's 
a bunch of Obi-Wan on a camel. It's Obi-Wan. And then all of a sudden he's in a city. And then seeing in the episodes, oh, this is actually about Leia was mm -hmm. totally crazy and totally yeah. cool. And I think that's a story that really needs to be told because yeah. the characterization of Leia as someone who is that headstrong young girl who like rips at Obi-Wan's heartstrings because he's like, oh, I'm. I knew a princess when she was like 10. I fell in love with her. And now I'm old enough to be your granddad, but I also knew both your parents. And it's a crazy relationship. It does kind of make it strange that 10 years later-ish, they don't recognize each other or she doesn't recognize him. No, like she was later that, was like she specifically goes to Tatooine Wait. to find Obi-Wan. You're my only yeah. Yeah, so there's not like a she forgets who Obi Wan is. I, I don't it's think she's, she's for forgotten. The, oh. Well, the message, you know, that very earliest hologram message anyone ever saw said was, "Years ago, you fought beside my father in the Clone Wars." My logic behind that is, he introduced himself as Ben, not That's Obi Wan. Right. So she might not have seen a picture of Obi Wan Kenobi, but she knows Ben. Yeah, and not me, by the way, different. she is. I, I know it's confusing. different. Ben. And she does have those, uh, you know, she is a 10 year old and 10 year olds are pretty, you know. Right. And that was that was what I was thinking is if you think back to the number of times that you're like, go to family reunions and your parents are like, but this is your aunt. You met them when you were 10. That means nothing to me. Yeah. Well, none you of my aunts saved you my were life. this big the last time I saw you. It's like, great. Right. Then I don't know you. Yeah. Right. But as long as we're talking about it, how awesome is baby Leia? She's, I mean, the she's, not, a baby. she's not a baby, but I mean, I, I love the Leia. portrayal. I love the portrayal of this, of this girl. I love the spunk. I love the sass. I love her attitude going into this. It's a perfect portrayal of, of who Leia would grow up to be. And, you know, it's also the, you know, I, when she's like, "What's wrong?" I just you, you remind me of someone. Yeah, Padme. Mm -hmm. She's she's a little Padme. Ah. Ooh, I read differently on that. I thought that. Um, oh, talk about was reminded of Satine. Yeah, yeah, well, that's possible too. The, there's a lot of different ways to look at it. To where, honestly, it could go either Padme, Satine, or Anakin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, granted, he does say, like, she died a long time ago, so it kind of takes Anakin out of the mix there. But there's very clearly, like, parts of Anakin. Right, Austin. and I, I feel like that's mm -hmm. going to be more of their storyline going forward, is the more he sees her parents in her, the more he's reminded of Padme, the more he's reminded of Anakin before he meets Vader face-to-face. -face. Like, I feel like that's going to be the the emotional abuse that Disney's going for here. Right. <laughs> I, can well, I just say how happy I was to see depressed Kenobi. Oh, I know. Like PTSD, oh. sobbing nightmares, the whole nine yards. I'm sitting there like, if I did not see a broken man in this series, I wouldn't like it because it right. wouldn't feel correct. Wouldn't be as accurate. And and the the absolute heartbreak on his face when the third sister says oh you didn't know he's still alive it's like no no yeah, yeah. that that so, that hurts the heart that one oh, hurt the that heart one hurts so because he's dealing with the guilt of killing anakin yes now he's going to deal with the guilt of leaving him there alive right and what if i had what if i had taken him could i have saved him then there's this you know that's what i started thinking was so there was the oh, guilt of having man. killed him you know, and leaving him there to burn in, in the lava pits on, on Mustafar. But now it's the, I left him there and this is what he's become, mm -hmm. you know, and, and Obi-Wan, I think in his heart of hearts is a, is a fixer, a saver wants to, you know, make those things better. And I think that that's going to be very hard for him. We've already seen the nightmares in episode through episodes one and two, where right. he's having these nightmares and, and all these flashbacks and things. And I think that that's, as I, I was talking to somebody today, I'm like, I love the fact that they're addressing the mental health issues that, that he had, 
clearly Obi was suffering from some form of PTSD. That's obvious between the nightmares, the flashbacks, the, um, and it wasn't just because he was a Jedi, the, the need for added security. Uh, you know, there's all these telltale cards of, of somebody who suffers from PTSD. And I just thought, paranoia. yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, as I watched this, I was like, man, I'm really glad that they're addressing that because that was definitely part of Obi-Wan's story. There is no way he could have gone through the Clone Wars, fought beside all of his friends, um, you know, watch them all die, know that they're all dead. And then thinking for all those years that he killed his best friend, there's no way that he couldn't have had PTSD from all of that. And now you get to spin that PTSD, that guilt into the, oh my gosh, he's been hunting me for the last 10 years. Right. My best friend that I thought I killed has been hunting me and wants me dead. Like, Maybe he just wants to send a Christmas card. <laughs> like, oh, <we laughs> with a lightsaber changed. attached it's to it. Great. I'm not <laughs> evil anymore. Come here so I can <laughs> hug you with my saber. Please. Right? Even, the, even the look on Obi-Wan's face when he dropped the credits for the clone in Andayu. Like, yeah, that was. Listen, that honestly hurt me more than almost anything else in the show. The yeah. fact that you just see how expendable the clones were. Yes. Right. Yeah, he's like, just he's a bum on Dayu. Like, like not only I, I that, they're in the five. That guy was in the five hundred first. That was Anakin's team. Yeah, yeah. He had five. That was his summer. clones. They worked with Vader after that point. So that means only, Vader was done with him. That was one of the few. That's one of the few spots where I, I actually, though, I have an issue with. And there, these are more nitpicky things mm. that that I didn't quite like in the show. It, it bugged me that he was sitting there in his full armor because I had I had an issue with that, thinking that okay, there's all kinds of you know these conscription soldiers walking by, okay. I don't think that they would have allowed or respected or, or anything with the clone. I, I don't know. I just had a hard time accepting that where there's these regular stormtroopers walking past and here's a clone trooper on the ground and full, you know, in, in his full armor. I don't know. I, I just, I mean, I, I thought that showed even more how much they don't care about them. Like, yeah, yeah. maybe so. Maybe I mean, so. Literally like at the beginning of bad batch, they started replacing the clones. Right. The moment the war ended, they're like, we're done with you. Get out of it. Leave. Yeah. No, that's true. So that that, that's absolutely true. Armor is the only thing he has. That is yeah. and literally all he's got left. I think, too, he was also wearing it for our benefit of saying, look at who this is. Mm -hmm. Like, if you yeah. been we're all paying attention, it. it's like, oh, that's who this is. If he wasn't wearing that armor, you would not have known it was a clone. No, I mean, you would have yeah. known it was Tamara Morrison and you would have done the wait. But why is Boba Fett here? But it's not. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, a lot of like homeless veterans do the same thing. They mm -hmm. wear their uniform to show, hey, I'm a veteran and I was not taken care of like the system says. Right. Please help me. Because people are more likely to help like war heroes and things like that as opposed to just some <laughs> random homeless guy. Yeah. Right. So having that clone sit there and it wasn't even a full suit of armor. Like it was the chest piece. We saw the pauldron, he the helmet, and he the rest was just tattered clothes. Yeah. Well, he I had, mean, had like, he cloth I mean, hand it would, wraps. It would have been highly acceptable if he would have had farmers overalls over top of it. <laughs> See, and my that's a different clone unit, though. Oh, times, that's a different clone unit. My bad. Sorry. How many more times are we going to see Tamara Morrison in a lot? In, in cameos because how many clones were there? He can he can have that cameo. My man has years, a job oh, for life. I yeah. know it's brilliant though. He, he gets very small residuals, but a lot of them. It's exactly. the best though. Like you know that you are set on a job as long as they're making Star Wars movies and they're like, hey, we need a clone. I got. I had, a, I had a question for you guys. You guys are super into Star Wars, like. My podcast, they're getting tired of the between episode three and four timeline being played with so much. What do you guys think about it? Should they get away from it? Or are you guys digging all the extra stuff that's coming out? There's you know, so I, much. Go ahead, Sam. 
please. I, I actually was thinking about that during our walk today of how it's kind of frustrating that Star Wars is basically focused on this one like 50 year period because there's not much going on between the Phantom Menace and episode two and then between episode two and episode nine is only about 50 years. And it is really the era of Palpatine and the era of Skywalker. And the other eras are not played with nearly as much. And I think there is really interesting things there, particularly in the expanded universe. However, there is a new show coming out that is Acolyte, eventually. Don't know anything about that. That's supposedly taking place about 200 years before. And I think that would be really interesting, particularly because the expansion of the Star Wars universe shows uh, some really interesting things with regards to... Uh, like there's droids that are a thousand years old. Yoda is like 900 years old. And if you imagine living in a state of technological stagnancy for a thousand years or a rise and fall, but you solve interstellar flight, it lets you have this really interesting, uh, more fantastical universe because that is what Star Wars really is. It's fantasy. It's not really sci-fi. Yeah. So agreed. The second yeah. part I had to that was, do you think the more that they play with this timeline, they're going to start creating plot holes? Like you had mentioned the Obi-Wan and Leia's situation. I'm just wondering if you think that's going to happen more as they play in the area. Oh, that's definitely going to happen. Like, Well, there, there's plot holes already because of the way that Lucas did the original trilogy. There's yeah. going to be plot holes, and they're going to try and retcon them as much as they can with other series and movies and, and try to explain them the way the best that they can. But I to go, go back to your previous question just real quick, I think another thing is that the the stuff between episode three and four is going to get a lot of attention because although that it's, it's a very specific time period, there was so much going on and so many different ways to look at this one set of stories that it can be told from so many different perspectives and storylines that it allows for some of these smaller characters to be blown up and given more more screen time or ones that have been created uh, like Andor for rogue one to be able to give and be given more screen time and 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 frankly as long as the story is good i don't care what timeline it's in however with that all being said i would like to see some non-skywalker stories come yes. about because there's so much out there that is not skywalker that is good that's mm -hmm. what i was that's what i was going to ask next is do you wish that they'd stop bringing that skywalker solo um leia like that the lineage Holding there. dry, like trying but, to like I mean, soak it for I would everything. Want anything Leia related any day for the rest oh, of yeah. my life. Yeah. There's well, not enough Leia, unfortunately. She, so, she was my Disney princess. I love it all. I was just curious to get your guys' take because you guys are way more into this than most <laughs> I of mean, you guys in my group. To add a little bit to that more, uh the new show that I'm really excited for is Ahsoka, and that mm -hmm. is related to a character from that period, but um since we're still on spoilers, spoiling Rebels a little bit, Ahsoka starts missing a couple of years. She gets lost in the Force and then comes mm -hmm. out. And so we don't see her for 20 years. And then she comes out during the Mandalorian era. And I've said for a long time that uh, we've been for a while in this era of rehabilitating the prequels. Because when the prequels came out, they were childish. People didn't like them. They didn't have the nostalgia factor of the original trilogy. I'm with you or your listeners or your team here of saying, I would love some stuff in the between episode six and seven era, because that's another 20 year gap. And mm -hmm. that's where Mando is. That's where Ahsoka mm -hmm. is to show that political change. I want to see the rise of Ron. The, the, oh, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's oh. Yeah. That is what is theorized is what's going to mm -hmm. happen uh, in Ahsoka is going after Thrawn. Like literally, we it can't is. see it because, I mean, you can if you find a uh, someone recording it. But the trailer for Ahsoka isn't online yet. It was a Celebration exclusive. But at the end of the trailer is basically a live-action recreation of the last episode of Rebels. Like, oh. the last scene in Rebels is mm -hmm. the, the mural of the Rebels crew and live-action uh, Sabine walking up to it. So you know that they're going to start off Ahsoka right at the end of Rebels. And there's kind of only one thing to do, which is find Ezra. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, one of the one of the articles that I found uh, talking about that very thing talks about where to go, where to go, where to go. Uh, the simple fact that we are going to see Ezra. We are going to see Sabine. Harris Sandula is also in that trailer. 
Um, you see this her only from Hera the... has a huge part in it too. Yeah, mm-hmm. which excites me because I love Hera. She's a fantastic character in Rebels. Um, and if you guys, anybody listening, is not on the I need to watch Star Wars Rebels train, you need to get on it now uh, it. because it is yeah. it is some of the best Star Wars out there. Honestly, um, I, I, I will admit you gotta overlook the Wookies. Yeah, you gotta they get do look season. a little wonky, but it's season one, and they actually had like no budget. Yeah, right. yeah. you got to get through season one of, of Clone of Clone Wars, and you got to get through season one of Rebels. And if you do that, you're in for some fantastic Star Wars. After that, well, one of the things they did with Rebels and Clone Wars that I liked is, I know that some of you guys really like the prequels, but to me, they fixed a lot of the prequels holes and so forth. And I know Definitely. eventually, I know eventually we're gonna get to that with the sequel trilogy mm-hmm. because um, John mentioned that Ray was a nobody before Episode Nine. Ray was supposed to be a Kenobi up until they rewrote Episode Nine. Right. Well, there's there's like a lot of if ands or buts with that. I know that there was a version of the script where she was a Kenobi, but there was also versions of the script where she had no information at all about her. I mean, literally, they put together Episode Seven with kind of like no plan just a lot of open ends of like hey these are directions you could go and then they didn't but i'm actually really glad she's not a kenobi because that would have broken so many things about who yeah. kenobi yeah. was as a character well um, you say that corky well i i know that <laughs> i know that but just saying rogu is okay. a kenobi, kenobi. yes because... rogu is a kenobi I, I still wonder if, if in some level, in somewhere, I th- I really think in this Kenobi series, we're going to see Corky cries. I really think mm-hmm. we are. I probably I honestly lose my in like my entire being will cease to exist. If, I think and I, the reason that. I say that is because with Disney Plus telling everybody to watch the Satine arc in Clone Wars, I'm like, other than just for flashbacks, there's got to be some other tie in. Oh, yeah. For him. For him to be, you know, for us to watch those things, I'm like, and those all, and, and the second half of those strongly involve Corky and what's going on, and I'm like, mm. yeah. So I have, uh, I'm into the X-wing miniatures game, and I recently got the Pride of Mandalore pack, which has all the Mandalorian characters. And it's very fun because you can play them with like all the different factions. Corky's card has him in front of an Imperial sigil, and mm, if I recall, that actually correctly, makes sense. Yeah, but he you would think, oh, he's a separatist or he's a Mandalorian or he's part of the Republic, but working for the Empire would make sense in this future. And I think that might be a little bit of a, a spoiler for his story Ooh. moving forward. I yeah. would love to see that. That'd be it, really cool. If we're going off of Rebels, like Mandalore gets conquered by the Empire. It does. Like Sabine Ooh. worked for Ooh. the Empire for a bit and then she and left went, to be a rebel. And went to John. Or flight school with the yeah. Went to Trooper Academy, yeah. My husband is a monster. But that would yep. explain the rapid aging that Kenobi goes through in the next few years. So you know, what's interesting about that, Jason, is... Um, oh, I forgot the actor's name. Which one? Alec Ewan Guinness? McGregor the, or Alec the, Guinness? Both. Um, okay, there we go. You got both of them now. <laughs> Ewan... Ewan uh, never mind. Uh, Ewan was about the same age as McGregor is now. Mm-hmm. No, that wrong. Ewan McGregor is his full name. You mean, you mean Alec, Alec Guinness. Guinness? You know what? The old <laughs> old Kenobi. <laughs> They're both the old Kenobi now, <laughs> as they are now. Old Kenobi, but, Kenobi, Kenobi and original Kenobi. I, th- I think I think Nick's looking for control of buttons on the show so he can kick Ben out. Uh, well, but Alec Guinness survived, so. like. So Alec, Alec Guinness survived like the Blitz, you know, and Ian McGregor right. survived Thatcher. That's it's different. <laughs> oh, dude, uh, 60s in the 70s is not like being 60 in the 2020s. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. There's age and cream. Two years, I feel like we've all aged rather rapidly. Yeah, but there's different yeah. medicines and, and all, you know, all these skin treatments and things that weren't available in the 70s. But how many people things look you, people? How many people do you know who you haven't seen since the pandemic and then you see them two years later and you're like, oh, so I didn't realize how old you were. (laughs) Right. That's actually the pandemic hasn't been good to you. (laughs) If I if I move my glasses and like the glare goes away, it's literally just like bags like this. Just all the way down to the edge of the glasses. It's bad. You gotta moisturize. 
All right, guys. Oh. So let's. Uh, at, I got one let's, more. Thing. Oh, I I did oh, want to say. Ahead, Nick. Oh no, Nick first. So at yeah. the beginning of Kenobi, we see the scene in the Jedi Temple of Order sixty six, basically. And I kind of yeah. get okay. They're showing this so that we know okay, this is about where we are in the timeline. But they showed a lot there, and I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. so who are these five kids that? seem to have gotten out so one of them is not exactly but kind of sort of confirmed to be reva yeah that's as for the others we all know that the inquisitors are just padawans or younglings that were tortured and basically brainwashed by the empire right didn't turn i mean look at uh with jedi fallen order with trilla Mm -hmm. second sister she was basically abandoned by her master and went to the empire. They mentioned Reva was a street rat living in the sewers of Coruscant before they went and became an inquisitor. So Mm -hmm. she survived on her own for a while and then couldn't do it anymore. As for the other younglings, either they are also inquisitors or they're all dead. Yeah. Yeah. More than likely. The other thing I liked about the, about Kenobi is oh. Ewan McGregor's daughter's cameo on Bayou. Oh, sure, yeah. I didn't know that. I, I sent it he to Tim, and he's like, yeah. Hey. I'm just like, what do you mean, yeah? Well, <laughs> I had, this kid? But I, I love... I had only I seen that. Somebody's daughter once. That, that has so much meaning just in like the context of the show, and at the same time, just handing Obi-Wan just a, a vial of drugs... Like crazy drugs and be right. like, I was someone's daughter once. The connotation of that is very not great. But then thinking like, <laughs> oh, that's his actual kid. Uh-huh. That's <laughs> I, I love that. that. Mm, no. <laughs> but I, I did want to say one thing before we switch to a different topic. Yeah, Sam, go ahead. you brought up both other stuff outside of the Skywalker Palpatine era and Acolyte, which is 200 years prior. Mm-hmm. That is the era of the High Republic, yes. which I am loving so much. The books, the comics, everything about the High Republic is great so far. Mm-hmm. I don't know what Acolyte's going to be about, but if it's in the High Republic era, there's a lot that can happen. For sure. And that opens up a lot more space to explore uh, with more Literally. Jedi. Because, yeah. But I think that the um, perhaps the marketing, because LucasArts is actually all about the toys... And having more Jedi, more troops, more starships, I think they really hit something with the prequels when they realized that everyone wants to be a Jedi. You know, mm-hmm. in the original trilogy, everyone, you know, I'm I'm Luke, you're Han, and our sister has to be Han- Leia because she's a girl. That was like very 70s thinking. And in the 90s and 2000s, like everyone wants to be a Jedi. Let's make let's let everyone be Jedi. But in order to do that, you have to have lots of Jedi. Mm-hmm. And in the 70s, That's they like killed them all off. So, yeah. So now you have to have more toys. I think that's what it's all about. But that's you know that, cynical, was, but... that was brilliant of Lucasfilms to mm-hmm. merchandise as well as they did. That I mean, sure, that also got mocked in Spaceballs with the merchandising. Oh my but god! But it makes sense. I, love space it balls. I know I love Spaceballs. <laughs> I need to watch it again. Yogurt. <laughs> I hate yogurt. But, but look at strawberries. Look at Skywalker Ranch versus wherever Mel Brooks lives. Right. Lucas was onto something. He was. Yeah. And still with the the Yoda yogurt, why did they have to name Grogu something so close to Gogurt? Because it's great. <laughs> because they're smart. It's Star Wars playing homage to uh, Spaceballs. Right? Are, are, they are in turn making the joke before somebody else can. It's in a the product play of self-deprecating humor. Uh, so apparently Mel Brooks lives in Malibu and owns a giant chunk of his beach. Oh, well, that's nice. His house is fairly small, but he basically bought a beach for himself. I mean, hey, if you got it. So go that's for it. probably where his money went. <laughs> there you go. All right, guys, let's I, I switch to topics real quick. But there's so many more things we can talk about. I know, but we got we do. We got a whole list of them here. Okay. All right. So this was also announced at Star Wars Celebration, Skeleton Crew, uh, which not a whole lot is known about it, other than Kathleen Kennedy has said that John Watts came to me very much wanting to do a sort of Goonies in Star Wars. 
a galactic version of a classic Amblin coming of age adventure film from the 1980s. So Stranger Things in Space. I, I'm in. I'm down. Mm-hmm. Let's yeah. Do it. Dude, so I think I our, think so. our most recent arc, actually, uh, we're publishing the second half of it uh, tomorrow, is the Ahsoka and Younglings arc, where there's okay. four little younglings and they Ahsoka rescues them and Hondo Anaka gets involved and there's a whole bunch of coming of age and a circus. It's a real fun thing. Now that arc was originally a pilot for a younglings TV series that just didn't go anywhere. So they took all the ideas and storyboarding and turned it into a four part arc. This skeleton crew seems like that. I mean, that was Could literally be, yeah. what happened with the clone wars. Like the clone wars was supposed to be a ragtag group of people, no connection. And the technically main character was the early versions of Ahsoka named Ashla that concept got turned into rebels. Mm-hmm. So, I and mean, they're actually, they're, they don't uh, throw anything out. They just find a better use for it. Like, and that, that name Ashla has come back around as being used in the latest Ahsoka book written by EK Johnston, which is amazing. It's also the, uh, the name of the light side of the force. There, you there go. is Ashla. I believe it's Bogan for the dark side. And then the Bendu in the middle. Yep. There you go. All right. Star All right. Wars so lore. Now, Nerd. Not much is known about uh, Skeleton Crew other than what I just told you, and there's not any real date given, but it's something to look forward to. And it's going to be directed by John Watts, who we know from the Spider-Man recent trilogy. So Also, Jude Law looks amazing. Like, yeah. The man doesn't age. I know. He's, he looked like this when... Uh, what, did, what came out forever ago with him? I mean, Sherlock I, Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. I'm thinking like 10 years before that. Oh, yeah. He great then. Yeah. He's basically uh, British Paul Rudd. So, you it, know, it's one of the many immortals that live in Hollywood. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Next up, Andor. Um, yes. I am excited about oh, this. Oh, excited. <laughs> Rogue All right. One. All right, Jason, go for it. Rogue One is my favorite Star Wars movie, hands down. And mm-hmm. I, I was. So happy Disney went there at the end. As much as I would have loved to see Jen or so move forward, because she is my favorite character in Star Wars, I'm glad that we get to go back and uh, you know fill in some of the backstory with these characters. And I'm all in on this show. Hundred percent, right. especially yeah. with like the emotion that he gave when he was l- saying like I've been fighting this since I was six years old. Mm-hmm. We get to see that now, which is terrifying for a six year old fighting this, but it has more weight to it now instead of just some random guy that we met like an hour prior. So this brings to mind something I think really interesting for me. When I watched the trailer, it started off and all of the peasants, all of the non-imperials are people of color. And then the imperials are very white and healthy looking. Mm -hmm. And that transition goes back to uh, a further answer for Jason's question earlier I have here, which is that we keep revisiting these same eras because we're seeing an ascent of fascism. We're seeing this rise to power. And I think it's a really interesting to explore in the current zeitgeist of the world to see how authoritarian powers rise because we do want to be the people who fight against a rise of authoritarianism. And that's what Andor is. Yeah, essentially. Literally, the the empire is based off Nazis. Yeah, like, of course, you're gonna want to see more good guys beating Nazis. But at at the same time, with that, another reason why they're so focused on the interim period between three and four is, historically speaking, well, I I'm a big history buff, and historically speaking, the fall of the Roman Empire and the years after were some of the most eventful years in history. Just this big power structure suddenly just... Poof, what takes its place? Five different things all fighting for the same stuff. Huge systems of economics and structure that are have been there for a long time are suddenly gone and being rebuilt by someone else. In the same way of when Rome went from a republic to an empire. Right. There's huge spans of time of just there's a lot happening. Yeah, a lot of different stories that can be told. So uh, Andor is going to premiere. Great thing is we don't have to wait very long for it. It's going to premiere August 31st of this year. Yes. Uh, it's with 12 episodes. And they said now this is going to start five years from the start, five years prior to the start of Rogue One. 
And those 12 episodes take us through the first year. And then the, they're going to go back. He said in November, uh, that's Tony, uh, Tony Gilroy, the show's creator. Uh, they go back and this November and shoot the next 12, which will, the next 12 will span the next four years leading up to rogue one. So that's just doing two seasons, two seasons from what we understand. Yeah. Can't do so. anything after that point, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's yeah. Once they get there, that's done. Uh, the one thing I am kind of interested about is that in the uh, uh, Stellan Skarsgård is in this, and he has a huge part as a rebel leader. So I'm kind of curious to see what happens there. With I don't him watch and anything with the Skarsgård in it. Pretty much, right? Yeah, they're a pretty amazing family of actors. So, all right, moving on. Next, we have Bad Batch season two. I'm very excited about this. I love the Bad Batch. Um, that's my boy Wrecker back there. <laughs> can, can I can I say a thing about it? That's it's yeah, a absolutely. trailer, so it's not exactly a spoiler. But Sam brought it up earlier. My favorite boy is gonna be in this. <laughs> the goodest boy, the goodest Jedi, Gunji, yes. <laughs> the Wookie Padawan is alive for the most yes, part. Is. For now, that we know of, and I am so excited. It's so funny you bring that up. We uh, so we did the first half of that arc with um, the geeky dad, and he brought his daughter Ariana, who's ten, and they were. He kept asking me. He's like, "Oh, so do you know what happens to all these younglings?" I'm like, "They probably all died in Order sixty six. Turns out, two days later, (laughs) two days later, (laughs) Gunji survives, Petra survives, and that's really, really cool because it is so disheartening to imagine all those." Padawans and just mostly that their stories don't get to be told because there's Literally so many the cool whole, characters. Kanan the survived. whole time I was watching it, I'm like, these Padawans are great, but eventually they're just going to die. Mm-hmm. They're just going to get right? shot down. <clears throat> but yeah. I, I also love just Wookiee Jedi. They are apparently super rare, just so interesting as characters. <laughs> I <laughs> nice love John. it. Like, one of the expanded universe Jedi's that I love is Tyvoka. Big, beefy Wookiee Jedi, just gold lightsaber blade. I love the design, love everything about them. But in the High Republic, there's Buriaga, another mm-hmm. Wookiee Jedi, and now we have Gunji. So technically, there are only three known Wookiee Jedi out of the thousands that have existed before. Well, that's what go. um. On, uh, Master Hu Wang, the robot who uh, makes who lightsabers. Alive. Yeah, he's like, I've been on this ship for a thousand years and never lost a fight. He's apparently older than that, but he he said, it's been a long time since I saw a Wookiee Jedi. It, it's actually also confirmed that he helped Buryaga build his mm. lightsaber. So cool. the last time he saw a Wookiee Jedi was 200 years prior in the High Republic. Uh, another thing with... Uh, Sorry, my brain just blanked on his name. Master... Hugh Wang. The... Hugh Wang. There we go. Uh, he's in Ahsoka. He is. Hopefully still played by David Tennant. Yeah. The, the so. lightsaber building mm-hmm. droid that is over a thousand years old is in Ahsoka, which makes me think that she's going to kind of pass him off to Luke so he can teach people to build lightsabers. Like, how, how did... Ben Solo build his lightsaber. Uh-oh. Um, some other things on Bad Batch, since I'm still seeing the screen here. I don't know if anyone else noticed their armor is uh, totally more different. colorful. Yeah, and I really appreciate that because it's very cool when you first see the Bad Batch in season seven of Clone Wars that they're wearing like not just stark white armor that sticks out from everything that they're wearing this cool skull motif red and black armor, and now it's like gold and yellow and green it's got everything and then omega grown up a little bit kicking butt i really started to enjoy omega's character a lot during bad batch as not only an audience stand-in but also as the person who's growing compared to the clones who have like taken on these roles and it's living that war movie trope in reverse of all these people have to de-flanderize themselves yeah Mm mm-hmm it's also uh, most of the armor itself is different. Like, yes. I know Wreckers has the most changes that, like, the shoulders are different, the arms are a little sleeker, but he still has, like, the bulky chest plate and helmet. Right. But, sorry. 
Uh, no confirmed release date, just that it's expected in autumn of 2022. We don't know the exact date yet, so that hasn't been confirmed. Uh, next is something called Tales of the Jedi, which is a new animated series. It's going to be focused on Ahsoka Tano for half and Count Dooku for the other half, is the way I'm uh, reading about it. Um, yeah. And the, 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 three about, about, the three about Count Dooku is going to be about when he was still a Jedi. So it's before his turn. Mm. So when I first saw this t- title, I was hoping it'd be like a Tales from the Crypt, where we're just going to get one episode about like somebody <laughs> in the galaxy somewhere, and then the next episode would be somebody in the galaxy somewhere. Because I think that'd be cool. I want a Star Wars anthology series. Sorry, continue. That, oh, that would be great. But I think that's also kind of the purpose of Visions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, yeah. no. Visions is more like what can be Star Wars, but not really. But I'm I am so excited to see Jedi Dooku and just see yeah. what happens. I mean, technically speaking, uh, if we're going by expanded universe lore, Dooku met uh, Jango Fett while he was still a Jedi. Yeah, and it wasn't until he was slowly turned to the dark side that he actually sought him out to become one of the clones or the the donate the. Donor for the clones, I mean. Oh, interesting. The, the bio dad. Yes. There you go. All right. Uh, so we'll have to wait to see when this is actually going to all get released and put together. This was just announced. Not many details have been shared about it just yet. But this is also coming sometime in 2023. We're hoping for spring of 2023. Um, so there's a lot of conflicting details of who will be, who won't be. But we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, so I'm going to skip right over this just for time's sake. Uh, one part where she is actually going to spend a lot of time in, from what I'm understanding, is this show, Mandalorian Season 3. Uh, Mando is supposedly... Yeah, we're going to see more baby Grogu. Uh, we are going to get Mando going back to Mandalore. He's actually going to go back to Mandalore and look for the sacred pools to cleanse himself of his sins. This is the way. This See, I feel way. like I feel like all of that stuff is just set up for the rise of the Book of Grogu, and I <laughs> I want it. Kathleen, I, I want think, King Grogu of Mandalore. I think a lot of the new Star Wars shows are all chapters in that continuing saga of Grogu. He's I, the money maker. He, I mean, we buy more Grogu stuff than anything else, except for my little expensive X wings. Like that. I, well, yeah. yeah. That that's one of Can't the things argue that. that like current Star Wars merchandise. The things that sell the most are lightsabers and literally anything with Grogu. Although the the headline I saw over the weekend with the move over Grogu, there's a new favorite in town with pictures of Kid Leia, made me so happy. Speaking so of light neighbors, adorable. Just saying. <laughs> well, I've now, already started out, started planning out cosplay outfits for my daughter for Comic Con this year. Like, she is going as little Leia, and it's going to be fantastic because the attitude is perfect. Also, a thing that I I noticed that I don't know who else has. Kid Leia's outfit is very reminiscent of Padme's clothes from the Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. Yes, very, very much. I saw that and was like, oh, it looks like tiny Padme. <laughs> well, part of that is one of the rules George Lucas put in place, which is no zippers in any of the costumes. That's the Star Wars universe never they, they invented laser swords and faster than light travel never invented zippers. No, no zippers, no buttons, yep. and as minimal buckles as you can manage. And Except according why to Carrie all the Fisher. Jedi have like a weird almost like butterfly buckle. Exactly type what you're about to say, Tim. And according to Carrie Fisher, no underwear. So <laughs> For a they had duct tape. Yes. You know. But yeah, so, uh, and also one of the things that was shown at Star Wars Celebration, but has not been made available to the public yet, is a shot of Bo-Katan sitting on the Mandalore throne. So, so wait, which I, can be interesting. With, uh, with Mando walking up. Yeah. Which... Uh, I think that's really interesting because hopefully my hope is that this focuses on the politics of like Mandalorian politics and the dark saber, because now we've found this whole other third path of you don't join the light side. You don't join the dark side. You kill someone and take their sword. And now you're the King. And that is a different, but still cool fantasy story. And I'm grateful that someone's telling a story like that because 
it's been a while since something like that came along with the propensity for violence and honor. And I don't think mm -hmm. that that's something that a lot of stories tell. We've been, we've lived in an era of anti-heroes, of honorless people winning for a long time. Mm -hmm. Agreed. All right, moving on. No, no details are given, but Star Wars Visions, the anime series, is getting a season two, which is the anthology things that we just talked about. Anime. Um, I'm, I'm not a big anime fan, but I absolutely I loved season one. In particular, the first the first episode of season one is outstanding. Actually, Star Wars I, content I haven't watched yet. I'd, I'd love for them to just read the continue. Book. I've, I've read the book for the Ronin, and it is amazing. <clears throat> Get the oh. book. Read the Although, book. Although, my mother-in-law requested today that we start doing a chronological Star Wars watch this summer, and I'm like, yes, please. There you go. <laughs> and listen, about things and and listen to our like, podcast while yes. doing it. Do that. Yeah. But also, we started talking about it, and she's like, oh, "Wait, where are we with Kenobi? When is this happening? I'm so confused." I'm like, oh. "Honestly, if you do, honestly, if you do that, please make her sit down and listen to Growing Up Skywalker after after, after everything you watch after every episode of the Clone Wars. She's going to get a lot more content out of that, and it's going to make so much more sense to her. It will be uh, our listening on ways to doctors' appointments. Like, well, there you go. Well, here here's the thing though: the episodes of Clone Wars don't come out chronologically either. Yeah, so no. you have to watch them another. No, but his show does. Yeah, we got yes. you. We got yeah. you. Yeah, uh, yet another reason to to listen to his show. We'll just follow the Growing Up Skywalker. Yes, Growing Up Skywalker. You have to, like it printed there's out. There's a reason why. The there's a reason do. why they're my we do. They're my my podcast crush. So, I have the page right. up on my other monitor now. <laughs> <laughs> I've been oh sitting there like, Ew, fancy. Yeah, it's a good show. I can't say enough good things about it. See, I like right. doing that with TV shows. I like watching them in the actual chronological order to mm -hmm. the the episodes not the release dates especially when you have shows that have spin-off series like i did that with doctor who and torchwood because you can watch them as they were released but then you can also watch them as events actually happened and it's trippy. it's nice to be able to have the option of whichever way you want to watch it mm -hmm. that's the cool I thing that was stargate yeah <laughs> my cousin's husband that. made her watch all of star trek in order by star date before they got married oh that's, that's tricky that's fun. Oh, but tricky. Wow. That that is like you have to jump between like ten different series to get that right. There's a there's a say there's got to be a lot of uh, chronological order shifts there to, between series to make that mm -hmm. happen. Yeah, and I'm new, and I'm new to the franchise, so yeah, I'm getting that. So because I'm pretty sure Next Generation, Voyager, and Deep Space Nine are all at the same time. Not quite. They're but close very, enough. Very close. Yeah. They're, They're in the same close. time period. So I'm just All like right. that was also her introduction to Star Trek. Like Oh god. <laughs> and yet they've been married for 7 years. <laughs> All right, one last thing to to show on our little slideshow presentation here. Uh it's not Star Wars related but it is Lucas Films related. I do like this that was... you cropped your pictures this time. I know. I figured it out. <laughs> Finally happened. All right. This has also been announced. This is and the last seen... slide where's Indy 5? Indy five, woohoo! I <laughs> uh, haven't brought that up because we really haven't, we really don't have a whole lot of information about that either. No, because but, Harrison Ford keeps breaking himself because he's old and has osteoporosis. Let's well, film. So. I thought he died. No, he didn't <laughs> die. Nick, it's blasphemy. The man Tim hasn't gone in the morning yet. Harrison Ford's not dead. Tim so, I, I swear, Tim. if there is an article saying that Harrison Ford died after you mentioned that. I'm coming to your house and I'm beating you with a lightsaber. Yeah, so, Nick. Who here? I'm about, to fire, I'm about to fire my co-host. I might need a couple more. <laughs> who here has watched the original Willow? Because I might have when I was a little kid. Like it's I, been a long it's time. Been a long time. Willow. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know a whole lot about it. So I'm not gonna. I, I don't remember a whole lot about it. Let's put it that way. Um, because I probably watched it when I was. Brain. I probably watched it last when I was ten, and we already covered how we don't really. You know, Actual understand things. From I was we literally exactly. thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, but that's that's going to be coming out as well. And it's uh, it's it it's got uh, you know a lot of the same a lot of the same actors, of course. So that's kind of nice. And uh, Warwick Davis is back in it, of course. Just, and he, actually, his two of his children are in the show as well. I adore Warwick cool. Davis, so I'm I'm excited. Yeah, He's it could be a lot of fun. He's Between... Willow. He's Wicket. 
He's just yeah. an amazing person and a great He's actor. Doctor Who, isn't he? Isn't he one of the like a, a two-parter and the, he's, the he's got a, I think he's got a, um, an ep- episode or two of Doctor Who. He's also Acorn the Dwarf in Tenth Kingdom. Mm-hmm. He's in the Harry Potter series. Like, oh, sounds yeah. like we need to have him oh, on the show. Who's the... We do totally need to have him on the show. I'm I may or may not have the, been trying. The, the name of the person he played in Harry Potter. Oh, uh... yeah, it's not coming to my brain. On Three Geeks podcast next week, we have Eric David. I'm I'm literally like the picture of him is there, and I'm just like. And we're only going to talk about the Leprechaun franchise. Wouldn't that make you so <laughs> mad? Then? <laughs> that would be greatly offensive. So, all right. So uh, we've got a couple of trailers. We're running out of time here. Let's let's get to our trailers, and we'll we'll start wrapping Flint this Wicks. up. There we go. Thank so you. last Friday, our guest was an up and coming actress who you may have seen in movies and shows such as Crips Fight Night. 5150, My Chemical Romance video. That sounds weird. A My Chemical Romance music video. And even Star Trek Picard as Ensign Kemi. Here's our trailer to Adele Pomeranke. This is Adele Pomeranke, and you're listening to the Funny Science Fiction Podcast. She's awesome. And, We've had her on before. I loved her. Yeah, she was a lot of yeah. fun. And just because I can, I'm going to also play this. Please feel free to lodge a complaint with the head of our complaint department, and that is the band My Chemical Romance. Sure, they're not scary, not even intimidating in, in any of the least. But what they do possess is a very special set of skills, skills that make podcasters like us very, very sad and not want to do anything, (laughs) skills that make them very dangerous to a show like ours. So, yeah, maybe not call them. No one wants that level of sad or depressing. I always found them happy. (laughs) That says something more about you than the band. <laughs> there is that. <laughs> oh my god! I wasn't going to say it, you know. Uh, <laughs> well, thanks again, Adele, and yeah, I guess we're going to go uh, get Nick some therapy. <laughs> <laughs> That's still one of my favorite things. Jason had to duck out, by the way. He has an uh, interview <laughs> waiting for him. So, uh, please go check out Jason at Three Geeks Podcast. They do a great show live every Sunday at noon Eastern time. You can check out their live show, and of course, they have pre-recorded episodes out there for you to enjoy at Three Geeks dot Ninja, I believe it is, yeah. and and worst case scenario on Twitter at Three Geeks Podcast. And sometimes there'll be one geek, sometimes there'll be eight geeks. You never know how many geeks you're going to. They get. are they are mathematically challenged. <laughs> real real uh, quick though, hey uh, hey Nick, you ever get that therapy? <laughs> <laughs> or did they just put you in containment? Right, he's just as you, as you can tell every Monday night, I've got to go into containment. So, <laughs> I noticed the chair is slightly different, it's not the all white background that it was. I think the lighting's a little bit better. Doesn't look like the, the hazmat containment room. I think we uh changed out the uh the light bulb. <laughs> I will say though that my chemical romance is not necessarily scary, but teenagers are. And have you heard, there was a guy on TikTok who did a ragtime version of Teenagers. That sounds fun. I didn't realize I needed that in my life. But that song is so cool as a ragtime piano song. Like, just just saying. Go down the rabbit hole. Oh, no. It's like, a wonderful rabbit hole. Like two or three times a year, I just will sit and listen to that album straight through two, three times just to... It was it's great. It's a good album. Also, I saw them live oh, no. opening for <laughs> Green Day, and that was a good show. Ooh. All Thank right. You. Well, guys, remember that that video is still up on our YouTube, and your subscription to our YouTube channel is a major help. So please do not forget to click the like and subscribe as you watch our videos. But this week, upcoming Friday, we have a power couple 
who have had a who have had a huge impact on the comic book scene, and it's safe to say that without their involvement, we would not have many of the superhero movies that we have today. Wrong one. Wrong one. Hi, we're Eric and Julia Leewald. And we're here with a funny science fiction podcast. So yeah, this Friday we are sharing our conversation with Eric and Julia Leewald. They were the writers, producers, showrunners for the X-Men animated series in the 90s. uh, That has had such a huge impact on the way comic book stories are told in, in visual media. They were also part of Young Hercules, RoboCop, Darkwing Duck. Uh, you saw Gargoyles there in, in the, the preview. And they're also now Mommy's again... alive. <laughs> that as well. But they're also going to be um, part of the new X-Men animated series on Disney+, Plus, X-Men 97. They are writing a show running that. And we talked to them as much as their NDAs would allow us to discuss it uh on the show it's a really cool conversation and an acknowledgement of their level of work and involvement in the superhero world it's just it's a really cool conversation so uh you can find that this friday morning on your favorite audio podcast provider whatever that may be you know google spotify uh you know uh, apple podcast whatever it is uh you'll be able to find it there or you can of course watch that interview right here on our youtube channel that's all we got that's it. That's, That's the show. Uh, uh, Sam, That's all, folks. <laughs> Sam, take take another minute to uh, spin through real quick. Remind people where they can find Growing Up Skywalker, please. Yeah, for sure. You can find Growing Up Skywalker at growingupskywalker.com. We've got all of our episodes there, as well as wherever you get podcasts, Spotify, Podbeans, Stitcher. If you don't find us, let us know. Send us an email at uh, growingupskywalker at gmail.com, and we'll fix that. So, Give us a listen. Uh, tell us if we missed someone on Baywatch, and we just would always love the content. We've had both Tim and Nick on and a few other guests, and it's just, I really enjoy doing it. I really enjoy having guests. When you get fun. to know the outcome. All right. We'll keep you in mind. There you go. Awesome. I haven't watched it's, the it's about 18 months from now, probably. That's fine. Unless they add more shows, which they are. <laughs> it could get spaced out. I'll be on the list eventually. All right, Ben, remind everybody about where they can find you. Uh, so I'm on TikTok at Hardy underscore Healer. I do Star Wars stuff. I do comic stuff. I do general nerd stuff, camping, everything. I do basically everything. It's a it lot. looks dang good in a kilt, by the way, I want to say. He does. <gasps> Hold on, I'm hooked into my thing. Are you wearing a kilt on camera? My headphones are just pulling off. I kept waiting. Add a boy. He's wearing a kilt under a robe. Amazing. That's fantastic. Shalancha, oh well done. I love yeah. the Utila kilt. Utila kilts yeah. are the best. I kept waiting for you to, as you're backing up to like, you know, like the headphones to stick and you just be like, Whoa! but yeah, it didn't happen. <laughs> they, they stuck three times, which is why I took them off because <laughs> I got them on a little hook and then I got them hooked onto my chair. Taking them off of that, got it back onto the hook. And I'm like, I'm done with this. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to thank you so much, Sam. Thank you so much, Ben, for coming on the show. Guys, that's going to finish us off for Funny Science Fiction Live. We'll be back next Monday. Until then, goodbye. On behalf of the rest of the hosts of Funny Science Fiction, we'd like to thank you for listening to this episode. If you'd like to be a guest on one of our future episodes, please contact us by means of our Facebook group, Funny Science Fiction. You can find us on Twitter or Instagram using the handle at Funny Sci-Fi. Or you can go to DraytonAllen.com and click the contact me link at the bottom of the page. Thanks again. Hope you enjoyed the episode.